and uh, I'm actually glad that none of the other speakers have really uh, delved into this um, because my main interest is, is, is psychotherapy and uh, um, what, what, what most um, researchers found was that, they are, that the psychedelics are most useful for uh, accessing um, uh, traumatic material from the past and once this traumatic material has been um, confronted and processed um, and released, for example, re uh, tensions in the body released, certain psychosomatic uh, problems released, um, it opens up the doors for much deeper experiences, uh, transcendental experiences, or as they say, transpersonal experiences, where you, uh, um, for example, may, may uh, experience how it is to be no, name anything, to be a lion, or to be uh, some kind of celebrity, or to be uh, the, the whole human race. And um, even further than that, you might even have uh, complete, uh, uh, completely um, mystical states, where you're, uh, uh, you become one with, with the source, as some might call it, or you realize that you are actually that there's not a God external to yourself, but that we're all actually God in the process of becoming. And that seems to be the, the most interesting aspect of psychedelics. Can I ask you a question? How many of you have actually had a psychedelic experience with either LSD or mushrooms, mescaline or anything like that? So, oh, wow. Oh, that's much more than I expected. Okay. <laughs> So why am I talking? <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> but actually there's many different ways to, uh, to uh, have a psychedelic experience. Um, for example, most people they have their exper experiences when they go out to a party or to a festival um, in the open air or, or in some kind of um, place to dance and with people and have a lot of distraction and it can be amazing. Uh, a lot of people also have psychedelic experiences in, in nature, for example, on the beach or in a forest or somewhere, you know, in a secluded place. Uh, you look at the sunset and, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, what some other um, psychonauts have uh, em uh, yeah, emphasized was that it's also very interesting to take these uh, products in, in, in darkness and uh, even silence, uh, especially Terence McKenna, who has already been mentioned, he recommended taking a high dose of psychedelics in uh, darkness and silence um, in order to just experience uh, the state of mind itself. Personally, I prefer music when I'm tripping because it keeps kind of a, um, a rhythm into it. You know, it, you keep going. And, uh, on the other hand, I've also tried it with uh, with silence, and that's also very special. But um, especially in the dark, uh, the, the, the visions and, and uh, are much more vivid than when you are, have your eyes open or when uh, the lights are on. But to each his own, uh, of course. But uh, it's recommended. If you haven't ever uh, tried psychedelics in darkness, and uh, then it's really uh, something to try out, because it's much more uh, beautiful and interesting, to me at least. Um, well. I'll just talk a little bit about uh, um, the, the holotropic states of mind uh, as described by Stanislav Grof. Uh, Stanislav Grof is uh, well known to many people in the psychedelic scene. Um, he's, he was one of the um, most active uh, uh, researchers for uh, high dose LSD experiences. Um, there were a couple of movements actually doing uh, research with LSD. Some they um, uh, gave subjects low dose, a low dose of psychedelics, uh, a low dose of LSD, over an extended time with a lot of um, uh, verbal psych uh, psychological interaction, uh, talking about the experience and talking about their problems. And, uh, um, whereas there was another um, group, and this was more uh, done in, in America, uh, where a subject was given a very, very high dose, uh, only once or maybe twice or thrice, uh, to um, 
to get a, an ego death experience. An ego death experience uh, it sounds pretty scary, but it's not. It simply means that the old uh, ego or the old uh, constructs of the ego and the concepts of who you are and your place in the world is, is, is kind of eradicated and you die in, in a sense and you are reborn. Um, after the ego death experience there is always the rebirth experience, uh, the spiritual rebirth, uh, which is often uh, a very ecstatic and uh, overwhelming experience which requires some kind of guidance. Uh, it's very hard to have an ego death experience when you're on your own because you may you know, resist the, the final stages of that, uh, that process. And if there's somebody to guide you and to encourage you and to um, you know, assure you that it's all right and that this is actually okay, you're more inclined to push through that barrier. And uh, that can be a shaman, that can be a trained and uh, expert psychotherapist who knows what, uh, what you're going through. And it, uh, what the, the researchers uh, discovered is that uh, this kind of um, ego death experience is much more healing than, uh, than the kind of uh, psycholithic, that's the other. One is called psychedelic therapy, the other psycholithic uh, therapy. Psycholithic therapy is what I described as a low dose over an extended time, regularly, uh, repeatedly, um, and with a lot of verbal uh, therapy uh, alongside it. And the, the uh, psychedelic therapy uh, was done with dosages of, say, 500 micrograms of LSD um, in a, a secluded place uh, or, or in a silent, uh, no, not silent, a dark place. No. Well, let's say uh, with, with blindfolds on, usually, uh, and some music like classical music, but nothing too, uh, too distracting. Uh, the, the, the attention was always to the experience itself. And uh, well, the, the, uh, the ego death or the, the high dose experiences actually had much more healing potential uh, than the, the low dose experiences. There's also another uh, approach which is called uh, anaclytic uh, therapy. That means that uh, during the experience, the therapists also um, give nurturing comfort and they, they touch the patient and give them a, a, a kind of um, nurturing touch that they may have missed when they were children uh, and uh, that's an, another kind of approach that's quite has proven to be quite useful and then there was um, uh, research done with with uh, artists um, uh, where uh, completely healthy individuals no psychological problems um, took psychedelics uh, to see what uh, happened to their artwork and to their uh, kind of expression. And that also had uh, really positive uh, um, results. But of course, it has already, already been mentioned, much of this research uh, wasn't done according to the standards of modern science and modern uh, academic uh, um, standards, the double-blind, uh, the placebo-controlled, and the randomized uh, kind of process. And uh, so many of these kind of uh, investigations that were done before are now being done again, uh, but then according to uh, the higher standards. I don't know. What, have I been talking for 10 minutes now? No longer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know. I to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> How long have I been talking then? Around 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So <laughs> Don't look at it. <laughs> oh, you had a question about before about meditation. And actually I wanted to comment on that. Because there's quite a big difference between meditation and, uh, and a full-blown psychedelic experience. Um, meditation is kind of calming the mind and, and making the, the, the mind tranquil. And although it, it does have some similarities, for example, I mentioned that you know in normal waking consciousness, you're very much uh, focused on the here and or not on the here and now, but on, like on, on spatial and temporal uh, kind of conditions, uh, space and time. And when you're in a deep meditative state, uh, you know time and space may also kind of lose their meaning, and you kind of uh, merge with uh, uh, a wider perspective, let's say. Uh, but with psychedelics, it's much more um, uh, dynamic. Uh, um, it goes it, faster, but basically, yeah. I mean, if you're if you have this experience. 
the meditation where there's no more boundary between you and the rest. Mm -hmm. I don't see any difference with basically this or... Well, this, this, this is not actually not a, uh, an, uh, an accurate uh, uh, portrayal of a psychedelic experience. Well, no, a real one would be moving and moving and, you know, changing and uh, going in all kinds of directions. This is just one a, a painting standing still. Yeah, but that's the same as that you cannot compare these. I mean, a psychedelic experience. I don't, know, I don't know how it's for you, but is there not a certain silence being aware of everything moving around you? And is it not the same as a meditative awareness where everything around you is moving? Hmm? Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, there, there are similarities and there are differences. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And actually, you know, it, they kind of, um, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you engage in meditation, it will benefit the kind of experiences that you have when you take psychedelics. And when you take psychedelics, you know, you, it may actually uh, um, increase your appetite to, uh, to meditate. And Not really, thanks for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the boys. Yeah? Well, it does depend. I'm a professional meditator. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, well, my, the teaching of my meditation say it's not, a, not something that you should mix. Oh, I know. Practically all uh, <laughs> gurus and uh, meditation teachers, they will say don't do psychedelics. It's, uh, you know, they, they're either they're not familiar with it or they, they think it's, uh, you know, too much of a distraction. You, you know, you have to make up your own mind about that. <laughs> Do you know anything about, I, I, I'm not sure if I, if I say it right, but the, the Santa Lucia church, it's something here in Amsterdam, it comes from... Uh, Santo Daime. Ah, yeah, but I'm not an expert. <laughs> it's a, a, a syncretic religion, a kind of combination of uh, Catholicism and, uh, and shamanism. Um, and it's not just in Amsterdam, it's many cities in, uh, in the Netherlands. They are using the stuff that Anna was talking about. Yeah, ayahuasca. Or they call it some, uh, the dining. More questions? Anyone? Okay. I think uh, we had a lot of interesting information tonight. Thank you very much for your mm -hmm. talk. We're going to have a some final drinks at the bar and the DJ. Psychedelics a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> Anything's fine. Ja, dat denk ik. Ik heb Want de meeste academici zullen zeggen van het is niet aan de maatstaven van de wetenschap. Het gaat meer over persoonlijke humanisme. Ik hoop dat het jongen dan. Ja, op basis, nee, eigenlijk niet eens alleen. Het is op basis van uh, aan de ene kant onderzoek met de genetica, aan de andere kant ademhalingstechnieken. Uh, 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 want toen de psychedelische uh, genetica aan uh, uh, deze auteur samen met zijn vrouw uh, heeft hij een, uh, een nieuwe techniek ontwikkeld op basis van uh, een heel diep ademhaling tussen feiten met uh, um, uh, Ja, ik heb het niet te Ik Ja, ik denk dat we net gemist hebben. Maar ja, ik ga het